Good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to our webinar with the topic Bush Control Touch KNX. My name is Thorsten, Thorsten Reibel. I'm sitting here together with Jürgen, Jürgen Schilder here in Heidelberg. Um, yeah, together with us is also Ilya, Ilya Zivadinovic in Lüdenscheid at Bush Jäger, um, who will conduct the main part of this webinar. And he is sitting together with Peter de Jager. Peter is the responsible product manager for this product, and he will help us in answering your question. Yeah, the feedback email, as always, will be sent to you afterwards, together with, yeah, the presentation is not the right word because it's a very short presentation. I will do at the beginning only uh, four slides, not more. So the main part is a demonstration together with this product. Um, so you can see it then directly in this uh, recorded video file. We will send to you as well. Let's have a look what is planned. Only one product today. Bush Control Touch KNX. So what's behind? You see the component here on the left. It's a very powerful device with numerous functions. A visualization is integrated. Interfaces to different other solutions and products is also integrated. And it works together with our My, My ABB Living Space Portal. You might remember from Free at Home, but also from, from Welcome System. So it's an essential part of this solution. But let's have a look, first of all, to some facts of this product. Yeah, you see it again here on the left side. So, so what you need is nothing else but the KNX connection and uh, a power supply is necessary. 5 to 36 volt DC to energize this device and very important also to have a LAN connection and finally also an internet connection yeah, to get access via this portal to uh, this component. Yeah, inside is a lot of software. Um, here's a summary of the main functions. And um, yeah, a scene editor is integrated, so light scenes can be created. Uh, a powerful timer is integrated with Astro function. Very yeah, powerful and, and unique is this logic script. So you can create some logical yeah, functions with a logic script. Will be shown by Ilya to you how it works in principle. Alarming, malfunction messages can be sent. Um, data, analog values, for example, can be locked and shown in any diagram, graphical diagram. Um, RGB support, so colored lighting is possible. Also IP cameras um, yeah, can be integrated and shown on the visualization. So network cameras and, and uh, IP cameras um, supported by these PTZ uh, commands. So, so zooming and positioning uh, is also possible here. A very nice feature is a presence detection option, also explained by Ilya during um, his uh, part in this webinar. Yeah, as it is a IP or network connected device and also connected to Twisted Pair, it can be used also as a yeah, um, kind of IP interface with KNX net IP tunneling function, also possible. Yeah, read requests in case of restarting or starting the system. So you can read out the, uh, the assigned values of the communication objects to initialize in principle. Uh, the device Philips UE can be integrated, also colored lighting, um, as well as UPnP commands or components like Sonos. Uh, distributed audio is also possible here. Yeah, furthermore, TCP and HTTP commands uh, can be sent. And uh, last but not least, um, different users with different rights and roles can be also created in this device. Let's have a short look to the yeah, visualization part. Uh, you see here a tablet PC in principle. It's a more text and button oriented visualization. So it does not replace any, any yeah, separate um, visualization running on a PC. There's a lot more graphical elements. But uh, yeah, numerous functions are possible. You, you expect from any visualization like switching and dimming something, blind control, of course, scene management. Um, you can jump to any other account to any other menu, other page, for example, RGB control, as mentioned, is possible. Um, yeah, analog values can be displayed here. Um, RTC control, it's not an RTC controller inside, but as a slave to, to operate an um, RTC controller, which is in the, in the building, um, can be integrated here. IP cameras, uh, videos from IP cameras can be visualized. Um, yeah, and many more functions you will see in the next presentation or demonstration by Ilya what is possible. Yeah, final slide from my side. Um, how do you get access to the components? So here on the left, the device in your home in any building, KNX project, of course. 
So first of all, you as a yeah, uh, system integrator installer have to register this device. And this is done via this My ABB Living Space portal. Again, you might remember from, from Welcome System, but also from Free at Home. So it's for registration, but also for set up the whole functionality in this device. And this, of course, you can assess locally via any web browser, um, via the uh, network in the building, and um, but also remotely as is possible, of course. The user who would like to operate later on functions via the integrated visualization at the moment needs access via Wi-Fi locally, very simple, or if it's uh, a, uh, sorry, a remote uh, access is necessary, then you have to go via VPN, which is also more or less integrated or port forwarding. So then any remote access possible and all these things you do via an existing app for this device. So in future, it will be also possible for the end user to assess via this My ABB Living Space portal, his yeah, program component and his project uh, in his building. Yeah, and how does it work? This is a registration and setup of the component it will be done now by Ilya. I just hand over now to Ilya. He will show you everything live right now. Just a moment, please. Hello, guys. Um, very nice to, to see you or to see you to see your names here. Thank you for joining this webinar. Um, last webinar, um, we showed uh, several slides about some main features of the control touch. Today, I would like to put uh, the main focus on a live demonstration to show you uh, several or some initial settings of commissioning, how to get start with the control touch. For that, I want to share my desktop like like this one and the first of all what you need is if you want to commission the control touch you need a web account in the my abb living space portal the control touch is a little bit different from other knx devices it is completely commissioning or uh, programmable over 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 web uh, uh, face web page. So in uh, my case, I have already uh, created an KNX account, uh, not an KNX account, an ABB My Living Space Portal account. So let me please log in. And the account is free of charge. you can register yourself uh you can have two profiles one profile is you can register yourself in the account as a typical user end user homeowner or you can also choose you are a professional like electrical installer something like like that uh, in my case i did that uh, and i have here also several links my home my installation and so on and so on under my installation I have the possibility to register my my hardware, my physical control touch. Um, this procedure I want to skip. You have a perfect description in the technical ma manual. Um, you will be guided. What you can do is to say, okay, I want to have a control touch uh, inside. You can call a control touch, enter the registry number, which is printed on the housing of the device itself, and uh, register it to your, to your account. In my case, I already did it. You see here, I have um, one control touch inside. You as an installer or system integrator, if you have an account, you can, of course, administrate not just one, you can administrate a lot of control touch for different projects, for different families, and so on, and, and so on. In my case, I have just one in my installation, and I want to open it. So if I click on it, I jump directly to the device itself, completely um, a complete web surface, independent web surface. And the first initial setting you can see here, uh, you can give your control touch, the device itself, your name. And if you are adding a control touch into and register it into the ABB uh, cloud or my, my ABB Living Space portal, you will 
initially also get a Dune DNS account. That means you are able now to use this Dune DNS account in combination with your mobile or remote PC uh, to get access from outside your network. And, uh, from outside your network. You see also here a project in devices. That means uh, I already have some projects in, inside. So what is possible with uh, uh, my MRVB Living Space account is you can register, of course, multiple devices. One device can contain only one project, but in your account, you can create a lot of projects and a lot of profiles. I will show it uh, late, later. And if you are in the same network, you have registered your control touch and your PC is in the same network like your control touch, uh, the control touch will automatically be um, um, seen in your network and you see directly the IP address of your local control touch. That means if you click on here, you are jumping directly on the surface of your local device. But at first, I want to show you uh, the web application. So first, what you need to do is um, you need to create some projects, to create a project. That means you click here on project, say, okay, I want to add new, new projects. In this case, I already did it. I called it first webinar or second webinar. Um, you can give here the name of the project. And here the settings are, uh, if you have defined in your ETS, you have several group addresses, you have defined for date, for time, you can easily edit directly type it in and you can say I want my control touch also to be a time sender uh, or in this case I'm sending I'm not sending the time so it is up to you how do you want to use it um, by uh, default settings the control touch is linked to a time server that means you will receive your time from the internet if you did this you will find here a link called group addresses you can click on it and at present it is more or less complete empty it means what you need to do is you click here on edit and in my case i already did it just to save a little bit of time you need to import your ets file that means first of all you in ets you are creating your complete ets project then you go to export and export your project with a uh, ETS file you are using, uh, you can click here on import, select the file and upload the file into the cloud. If you did this once, just to show you, you will get the complete group structure and from ETS also the complete building structure. That means what you see here are all the group addresses and the physical addresses of uh, the components, but not the components, the KNX devices it's, it's, itself. And then step by step, you can rebuild your own visualization structure. That means um, maybe you have a very, very huge KNX project, but you don't really, or you don't need to do the visualization for the entire projects. That means uh, you are talking to your customer and the customer says, okay, I want to have a visualization for light, for blight, for HVAC and so on, but uh, not for different um, group addresses here like this. That means you need to uh, rebuild or to build a new visualization structure. This is very easy. So uh, what you can do is to say, OK, at first, uh, the target is I want to have a visualization of my living room. What I want to do is to control uh, some lamps. I also want to control some blinds and, of course, um, uh, maybe the heating. So in that case, you can open here the structure from your ETS. You can click on lighting. You can, of course, select directly the group addresses, or what you can do is to say, no, I go to the group address above, and this box here works like a filter function. That means here you can say under this group, what I want to do is to add all 
all switches or all one bit communication objects or one all one byte and so on and so on and what you can do is to say okay i want to uh, make a new regroup in my case i want to make it easier i will uh, take over the main and the middle groups like this one so that means the the names are here for me very okay and i say okay plus now you see uh, he added all the group addresses under lighting which are defined with a data type one bit so this i can also do and say okay i also want to use a dimmer and please also add me a dimmer like this one and by saving you see here a new structure yeah. you can also rename the structure or regroup the structure but you see here lighting you have switching and you have uh, value uh, for for instant dimming so step by step i can do it for all the group addresses i need and if you say okay or if you choose i want to go very deep into the structure you can say okay if I click on living room and the living room is already defined as a one bit from ETS, you can see all what is not possible are hidden. That means he recognizes this is a one bit object. It is up and down from blinds. So what you can do is to select directly the type like this one here. Oops, blinds and say plus. The same also for steps. Uh, it's not the switch, it's a blind plus and say save. Now you have also the structure for blind step up and down. Um, in our case, I also want to add some some scenes. Uh, maybe you your electrical installer uh, has already defined several scenes. Uh, in the ETS projects, you have a lot of possibility how to organize the scenes. Uh, first, you can say, okay, I have some scenes stored in different other KNX devices in some actuators like this. Or um, that means then you can use the control touch as a so-called um, extension unit. So in the control touch, there is not a scene editor included, but it works like a uh, extension unit. You can call the scenes, but the scenes must be stored somewhere. In the other case, you as a customer can also create your new scenes and store it also directly in the control touch. That means whenever you are adding uh, here some group addresses, you will always be asked allow in scenes and time switches. That means if I open this, I did it. And I allowed my user, my end user later, if you want to create his own scenes, to use this group addresses. This you can enable or dis disable. In my case, I want to use a scene, a predefined scene, oops, like this one, and say, okay, I have maybe somewhere in my projects three scenes defined. I can add three scenes and say, okay, the first scene I have uh, created was maybe all off. Uh, the second scene I have all on. And the third scene has, for instance, is my comfort scene. That means you are using the control touch now just as a call for scenes. And you need also to give him a number. That means all off, maybe it is scene number one, all on is maybe scene number two, and so on and, and so on. And you say save. That means uh, you have now created some scenes and you have predefined the value. What do you want to be sent out if you click on this object? This you can do for each communicate or each group addresses like here. So this you can do step by step. And if you have defined this, um, you can start with a visualization, the first visualization. It means you can go to the device here and say, okay, I want to create a new profile. You can say, I want to add a new profile. 
Uh, here I already did it. I called it the first webinar. This is the name of your profile. You can, of course, administrate multiple profiles. And the first page is an initial page for settings. It means you see here navigation page and control page. Mostly you only have these two pages, but you can be very creative. You can have a navigation page included inside another navigation page, then linking to a control page and so on and so on. The most difference is control pages are containing all the control elements for dimming, blind, and so on. And navigation pages are more or less links on operation pages. You are also able, if you um, have enabled some advanced settings in some advanced settings, um, to change the skin, the appearance of the web page. That means you can say, okay, for the control page, I want to have a complete different background like this one and say save and change. Now for all control pages, you have this background. You can do this for navigation, but you, what you can also do is you will see it. If I add some new pages, you can be also very creative and flexible, flexible in colors to change for each page a different color. This is what you can do here. But the first, what I want to do is I want to add a new page and I want to call this page living room. Like this. Here you can, oh, sorry. Then the page type, I want to have some control elements inside. That means I want to use a control page. You can also uh, give him a um, nice icon, a picture. You're also able to uh, upload your own pictures if you, if you if you want. So in this case, I have a room, maybe a living room. What you can do is also for the pages to pin code the pages. It means you will ask for access with a pin code. You need to enter before. Or you can also send a request to ask for a touch touch ID. Um, in this case, I want to make it more easy. I don't want to pin code it. And now you are starting to build your page. You can add several control elements. Here you can see you have a lot of control elements from display control elements for dimming, RTC control, shutters, and so on and so on. You have also um, some uh, empty spaces, some uh, text um, control elements where you can have a static text or variable text um, just to um, give the page more order uh, or more structure. In the first, what I want to do is to say at first, I want to use a switch. You can add a switch. And if you click on the switch, you will see here a box, a drop down box. You can open it. And here you can see what is possible for, for switching. Uh, um, you have seen, I have added several more group addresses, but here is only the selection of what is possible. In my case, I want to use here um, the spot to turn it on, to switch it on. You can also use a switch only for display. That means if you just want to see the status of an object, you can also say, okay, show only, but touching is not uh, allowed. Ask for confirmation is if you have some sensitive control elements and just to avoid to press it by mistake, you can also say, okay, please ask for confirmation. Do you really to trigger this object? Something like, like, like that. And of course you can choose your own icons. And of course you can also follow our color settings. You hopefully know from all our products, sensors, Comfort touch, prion, and so on. Light for yellow, say save. And what I can do is also to add a dimmer. Say, okay, I want also to add a dimmer, create a dimmer. And the dimming, the value for dimming is, for instance, table light. And if you want to switch, you can also, um, oh, I haven't imported the table light. Um, you can, oops, 
use halogen spot. And if you want also to switch it, you can also uh, use the communication object one bit. You can choose, do you want a slider or do you want a text button? In my case, in this case, I use a, a slider. You can also rearrange uh, the text alignment and the stepwise, step white. Say save. And now you can slide, or if you press the bulb, you can also directly switch. The same you can also do if you want to use your blinds, shutter, curtains, something like that to say, okay, I want to use here some, some new shutters. Here the blinds. Here I want to use the step, of not step, uh, up down, sorry, up down. And here I want to use the step, living room. The same procedure here, say save. And so step by step, you can build your own own page. And if uh, you want to rearrange a little bit, uh, you can also click and via drag and drop, you can also reorganize or um, rearrange the settings, the settings here. Um, the next is uh, I told you um, we have also some 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 scenes inside, and um, I also want to create uh, a scene controller. Uh, we can stay here on the living room, and I can say, okay, uh, I want also to use uh, scenes like this one. I can add some scenes and say, okay, I have some predefined scenes. And I have here my all on scene or all off scene. I can choose here some some icons, all off, something like that. I can say save and so on and so on. So okay, scenes like all on. Like this one symbol, send save, and so step by step. Um, you can also include several scenes in inside your um, inside your page. Of course, you have different possibilities to start to start scene. You can do it like this. You can also use uh, one byte object uh, to start start a scene. This is uh, you can also use um, so uh, push buttons to call to make a call for a scene. So this is really up to you. But this is more or less the most uh, easiest way of how to integrate the scenes in your in your web page. So um, I told you you have you have um, different pages. You have control pages and you have uh, navigation pages and you have initially a menu page. This means this is more or less your starting and landing page. Uh, it is a navigation page, and uh, you also want to. Uh, to have a menu, a structure in your in your iPad, on your iPhone. Uh, that means your landing page is always the menu page. And please don't forget also, uh, uh, don't forget to link to your operation pages. That means I can add here a new link, say OK. And I want here to jump up to my living room and say save. And what you can see here, a uh, practical, my practical recommendation, uh, please create at first the control pages and then the navigation pages, because the navigation pages are only links, more or less links to the control pages, like, like this one. So um, I hope you can imagine how easy it is to add dimmer scenes, blinds, and, and so on and so on. In this case, I don't want to go too deep inside. Uh, the next, what I want to show you is uh, the temperature control. In that case, I need to define all also the group addresses for the temperatures. See here, I have lighting and switches, but no temperature. So now uh, the target is I want to display temperature. I want also to change operation mode, and I also want to uh, change a new set point. As 
Thorsten mentioned, the control touch, it's, it's only a slave. That means somewhere in your project, you need to have a real RTC uh, controller. The slave, like here, the control touch is an extension unit. That means you are just sending some requests to your master for changing operation mode or changing the set point. So I want to stay on um, the living room and I want to make it easy and I say, okay, I want to have some actual temperature like this one. I mark it directly. You can see here it is directly triggered on temperature. I can say, okay, main group address like this one. This is to display the temperature. And I also want to uh, maybe display the set point like this one, say plus. And the most important is, of course, I want to change the temperature. That means what you need is to say, okay, I have, I'm sending a request to the master. Uh, and I want to receive a confirmation. That means you have uh, um, a shift between these two group addresses. And you see here, you have also a data type called shift. I play, I say, okay. And if you request something, you also want to get a confirmation like this one. Here's the same, say shift plus and save. So now I have a new group, HVAC, actual temperature, set point, uh, confirmation set point, and requesting set point. So now uh, you see here you have a sending group address and you have a status group address. That means a receiving group address. Here it is also very important to say, okay, I am uh, sending a request on, from this group address. The master receives this and confirms it over this group address. That means this I need to change and say, okay, listen to the group address of confirmed set point coming from the master and say save. More or less, I think I have added all group addresses I need. Then you can jump back and go to your profiles. And I want to create a new page. And I want to say, OK, this is my temperature control page. You can give him also here a nice icon. Say save. And uh, now you can say, okay, what I want to do is to display the temperature. Say plus. You have here a display of the temperature. And you see here, you have a set point to display. In this case, I want to display my actual temperature. Say save. This is all. Then the next is I want to change uh, the operation mode. That means, what I can do is to add an RTC mode selection, say plus, click on here. Here you can select, do you want to be able to set it on comfort, standby and eco mode. And you have also here, oh, I didn't select it. Just a moment. Projects, group addresses to say I have here an HVAC and I have here an uh, RTC operation mode, living room. It is uh, RTC mode plus and safe. So, sorry, under profiles, again, temperature, you can now uh, say, okay, under this uh, group address, I want to change uh, the operation mode and say save. The next is uh, we also want to uh, use a set point. That means 
you can select the change temperature control element by plus. And you see here, if you are adding a set point controller, you see here the set point in white and a little bit hidden, you see always the actual temperature like this one. So here you can say, okay, display my set point. Here is my set point. You say actual temperature. You are sending, uh, say, actual temperature. Then you say, okay, set point request confirm. It is you want to send a request to your master. That means choose a request and say save. And this is all. This is how you can uh, do a visualization of um, yeah, RTCs. Um, the next point are UPnP commands. What is possible? If um, I will jump back to the local device page, you see here, I jump here to the local device page. You have the possibility, if you have UPnP devices inside your network, you can uh, scan your network for UPnP devices. Um, you can imagine here in IBV, we are a little bit limited uh, with, with some devices in, in networks. Uh, you can scan for it. In my case, I have a Sonos loudspeaker, but Sonos is just an example. We are talking here about UPnP commands. So you can scan for the devices. That means locally you have it. And uh, the next step is load configuration. That means if you found your devices, click on load configuration, that you have a synchronization between the local device and here the ABB Living Space Account commissioning web page. So the first what we want to do is to say I want to add a new page and I call it in my case Zonos. Then you can choose a nice icon again. And if you don't find a proper icon, you can go under images and upload your own icon and give here your own name for this list. So I did it, my graphics, and I added a Zonos icon to make it more customized. customized. So I'll say save. And now the same procedure. What I want to do is also to configure several commands uh, for instance one command for uh, adjusting the volume one command for play one command for pause and um, i also want to jump directly into the zonos app it means the first is what i'm doing is i'm choosing here a upnp slider say add and the upnp slider you see here devices he already found my UPnP device. That means you need to, on your local device, to search for UPnP devices, then to press on upload configuration, and then you see here the list of all your UPnPs, device, uh, UPnP devices. In this case, I use a slider for volume. More or less, it's not, it's not more possible. Um, slider, text with slider, like you know it from a dimmer. But in this case, I want to show you the next, uh, the second possibility to say I want to use it as uh, text with buttons. The same alignment of text, step size, and so on, and say save. So what you did here is by quick and dirty your first UPnP command. So the next is uh, what you can also do is to say I uh, want also to have. Um, um, command sender for instant um, for pause or for play 
something like this. Say, okay, multimedia, uh, symbol for play. Give him a good name, play. UPND P device uh, is selected. Please make sure. Say save. And the next is also a next UPNP command. And to say, okay, for instance, I want to use it uh, for pause. Symbol. And so on and so on. Um, what you also can do is to say, okay, I want to have a uh, um, variable text, uh, and maybe you can also uh, display um, the title, the album, the artist, and and so on. But in my case, I uh, my recommendation is you have or if you have an UPNTP device, typically you have an separate um, app for your device so you really don't need to rebuild everything so this is my my practical point of view mm, if i want to have more i can say okay i want to link directly to the zonos app that means you can use the control element web page say add and inside the web page, you can say open in browser or open on page. The difference is open in, in browser means open in a new application. And open on page means uh, you can create a frame inside this page. But I want to jump directly to the browser page. Then I can give him a name, um, link to Zonos app, and then I can directly call Zonos directly by this by this URL. I can also use my own graphics and say save. So that means um, if you click on this, the Zonos app will automatically be open. You are jumping to the Zonos app. You can make your configuration and you will see on Zonos here on top, on the uh, left-hand side, uh, back to control touch app. That means you can toggle directly between the two apps. Um, the next, what I want to show you are presence detection and trigger control. If we jump back to uh, the projects, you see here we have a link called presence detection. If I click on it, you see uh, if you have different mobile devices inside your network, like your control touch, your mobile devices will be automatically recognized. And uh, in this case, he recognized my, my iPad. It can also be my uh, smartphone and so on, or whatever. And if you have more devices, you can uh, select it for different devices, different night periods, and different timeouts. That means uh, the presence detection means uh, it is a detection if your mobile device is locked into your home network, yes or not. That means if you are present or if you are away, something like, like that. And you can use the presence detection to start or to trigger different scenarios. Um, but not you don't want to do it always. Maybe at night you are switching your mobile phone off or something like that. And you have defined a trigger for doing something. Uh, if your mobile is, uh, is, is not in the network, you don't want to have it. So this is why you can define a night period to say, okay, at that time, whatever triggers I used uh, are enabled at that time. And you can give a time out to say, okay, uh, he shall use the function only if my mobile is 50, 30, 45 minutes on or off, something like, like, like that. If you did it, you can use a trigger to say, okay, I want to use a new trigger. And I will add a simple, a simple trigger to say, okay, uh, 
play uh, by present, for instance. This is my name. You can add different conditions. You have the possibility to trigger something if something happens on a group address, if something happens on a HTTP, if something ha uh, uh, happens on a protocol, that means on or off, or in my case, I want to use the presence detection to say, okay, play by present. When my iPhone or iPad or smartphone, smart tablet is present, then you can trigger group addresses end and end. But in my case, I want to use a command, say UPnP command, and to bring my system, set it to play. Something like like this. You can do the same in a in a in a opposite way to say, okay, I add a new trigger and say pause by not available. Available to say, okay, presence detection only with when I am not at home. Play a command UPnP and stop the music, shut it off, something like like that. So step by step, you can uh, use um, th uh, this, um, and you can be very very creative uh, what you are doing with with your triggers. You can have a lot of triggers. You can also use script for triggers or uh, start scripts by a trigger and so on and so on. And um, sometimes, of course, it makes sense to test it. So if you um, finished your configuration, you can go on the control touch itself on a local device. You can say, okay, load the configuration. That means the control touch will download all the settings from the cloud and import it in the device itself. And you will find here an, a, called, a link called alarm messages. It means more or less testing and simulate your conditions. So you can simulate your triggers, you can simulate your scripts and, and, and. So this is what you can uh, easily do to test if your configuration is okay. Does it work on, or, or not? The next, what I want to show you is the data logger to stay on this page. Um, in my simple case, I you remember the temperature I have added. And in my simple case, I only want to display the, te the temperature. You can say, okay, I want to add a new data logger. Say, to give him a name. And you can choose a time period. When do you want to uh, read the, the value? You see hour, hour, day, week, month, year. And you see here by time period, what measurement cycle is is behind. In my case, I want to have it for an hour. That means each 30 seconds, I have a value. Then you can choose a type, uh, mean value, actual value, and minimum, maximum. And if you have uh, some energy counter, some energy counter delivers are de delivering you the absolute value or the delta value means here, if you want to measure your consumption, you can also uh, choose uh, is your energy counter sending in, in total or it's just sending a delta to make the visualization uh, more useful. And here you are choosing the component. It means um, component means on which group address you want to listen. In my case, I want to have the actual temperature of the living room and say add. Step by step, you can add, of course, a lot of, of data, data, data loggers. You can do it for temperature, you can do it for brightness, energy, and so on and so on. But now we need to, uh, we want to display the, the, the values. It means 
to display it, you can go to your devices again under profiles. I want to add a new page and you can say data logger or give him a name, control page icon and so on, the same procedure. And then you can say, okay, I want to add a data logger like this one, plus mark it or highlight it. You can choose it is a line or a bar. And then under data logger, you have all the uh, pre-configured data loggers. In my case, I did it just once for the temperature. You can edit. And you see here, show min and max value. That means if you are receiving only in 30 seconds, um, the value or you're reading in 30 seconds the value, but maybe uh, your value sender is giving it in a more shorter period. So that means you have also a min and max value. It means you have three graphs, one for the mean value and one for min and max. If you want to avoid this, you can say, okay, no, I just want to have the actual temperature, the mean mean value. You have different settings, value factor, shift, and so on and so on. Um, here, what you can do is if you have a factor, uh, for instance, you have a kilowatt and you want to have it in, in, in watt, that means you can add a factor 1000. If you want a value shift, means if you want to change uh, uh, the, uh, the temperature from Fahrenheit to degrees, something like, like that. And you are also possible to add if you have defined um, more settings, more data loggers, uh, to add a second graph inside. Uh, maybe you have also uh, added a graph or data logger for uh, brightness, outside brightness. That means then you can display here also uh, the outdoor brightness in comparison to your room temperature. So this is what you can, can do um, and display it. So these are the data data loggers. The next is um, I want to show you some alarms like this. What you can do is you can add some alarms inside. Uh, for instance, to send you a push notification to your mobile device. It means um i click on an alarm and you see a list of possible mobile devices where it is possible to send a push notification i click on add an alarm and i say i want to um i don't know i call it maybe wind alarm like this and what i can do is to say okay an alarm occurred uh, on and then you can use this one d d t t you see, see it in small letters and in uh, large or big letters uh, for instance t in small letters hour and minute big letter t also seconds so it depends on on you what what you want uh, in this case i want to be displayed an alarm occurred on that day at that time, then you can choose uh, the message. When, when do you want to receive it? Uh, maybe you want to receive it when it always occurred, or you say, okay, uh, it can occur at different times, but I want just only to be remembered uh, every 50 minutes, something like, like that. You can send you an email, or you can send you a push notification on your mobile device. Then you can select here your condition type. You can say, okay, um, maybe you have a binary input uh, or weather station or um, nah, blind actuator. Um, then you say, okay, I want to use the group address. And here you are choosing the group address of your wind alarm, for instance. Um, 
in that case I didn't edit. I can say okay, change and return. You can go to projects and say under the group addresses, edit. I have some alarm messages, some switching. Um, I choose both and I use a one bit value. Say plus and save. Now under the profiles, under the alarms, I have now the possibility also to use, okay, whenever a wind alarm on this byte occurred, not every telegram, only, you can also say only when one occurred, select a condition and so on, you can add more condition and say, okay, change. That means whenever a wind alarm occurred, you will get a, no, a push notification on your mobile with a text message, message an alarm occurred on that day at that time. So this is how you can uh, create alarm messages. The next is I want to show you how to add cameras. How to add cameras under projects, you have here a link, cameras, and you can include uh, internal cameras as well as external cameras. Here in my case, I already did it. You click on add camera. Uh, the first one is my internal camera. The second one is my external camera. You have a dialog box. You can give it a name. You can choose a type, is it Axis or Mobotics or other cameras which provide you with motion JPEGs, something like, like, like that. You are, uh, then you are using others. Then you can give an internal URL. That means here in my case, the internal IP address of, of my camera because I'm in the same network. If you want to go from outside to have access on your camera, you can also, if you have enabled that your robotics camera, in my case, is also available from outside, you can also give here an external uh, URL. Here you are choosing how large do I want to display the picture, uh, the, the, the picture on my mobile de uh, device. And if your camera is doing this uh, to support pen, tilt, and zoom, you can also activate this. On mobile Wi-Fi, you can also say, okay, always video stream or only video stream when I am on, uh, when I'm inside my home network. If I have a good Wi-Fi connection, uh, then all video stream and uh, only then you can say change. Uh, of course, if you have, uh, have a password protection, here is the password. If you want to include an external camera like this one, the same procedure, select the type, put in the URL, look what is what is possible to support. Typically, uh, you have no support for public cameras for pen, tilt, and zoom. And uh, typically, public cameras also have no password. Um, that means if you add the camera into on your on your Control Touch app. The Control Touch app will always ask for username and password. And if he don't find this, he will give you a alarm message or mistake message, something like a password is wrong or so on. Uh, it's not wrong. It is always not available. What you can do is to say, okay, I want to uh, enable that uh, no warnings for these cameras are displayed. So this is what you can do and you can save your settings. Now you have commissioned your cameras, but you also want to include it in your app. So what I can do is to add a new page. I call it cameras. Same procedure here, say save. And now I can add two cameras. The first camera is my Robotics camera, save, and the second camera is my public camera, save, and that's all. Now you have added your um, 
cameras into your into your control touch app. The next are scripts. The scripts are very very. Um, uh, it's a very very powerful feature. Um, under scripts, you can be very, very creative what you want to do. So um, with scripts, with the programming mode, you are more or less able to do everything and to customize really solutions. Um, what I want to do is to show you just how it looks like. I want to add a new script. And for instance, I want to uh, say, OK, um, I have an integrated RGB lamps, for instance, um, and if an error occurred, I want to set all my RGB lamps to, to red. Means what I can do is um, to say, okay, I give it a name. You can enable and disable it. Um, you can say, okay, this script is always running after reboot. And if you want, uh, also the scripts to be available in scenes and time switches that your customer can also use this. You can enable or disable it. And here is your programming editor. And you have a lot of commands. You have commands, you have functions, you have scenarios, you uh, can compare, um, compare, uh, yeah, Values, if, if you want, you have compare functions, end and end. Uh, what I want to do now is to say, okay, if something happens, then please do this. So I have commands, and what I can do is to say, okay, if, oops, if now I have here a condition, now I have a condition, and I can say, okay, if, uh, and choose i want to have a heating error you remember in my group address i have a one bit heating error uh, say okay i want to choose my heating and if my heating uh, says it has a value one then you can go and say okay under the commands set my rgb components you click here, RGB, and if you have some defined group addresses for your RGB lamps, it will automatically be displayed here. You can select one and say, please, then, oops, go to red. Like this one. And you can save and check. So if you see, if you did a mistake, uh, it will automatically uh, be um, give you give you a warning. You say, okay, set. You see, okay, okay, okay. Ah, here the brackets are not okay. That means what you can do now is to say, okay, I want to correct this. Save and check. And if is everything okay, then you can. Um, um, you have no no warnings anymore, and scripts you can also use also for for some 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 triggers. That means a script needs needs to be triggered. It, it's not running always uh, in the, in the background. That means what you need to do is to say, okay, I use a trigger, I add a new trigger, I give him a name like this one, and say. Whenever my group address from alarm messages heating error has a one byte, uh, one uh, has a one on this on this uh, uh, one on this group address, then call the script heating error and start, and say done. This is what you can uh, also also do. Um, I used an if, so if this, then that. Uh, in this case, if you are using a trigger, you already have the uh, 
um, the, 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 the condition if it is one or, or, or not. It is only the possibility what I want to, to, to show you. And what you can also do is to use also uh, some, some, some uh, scripts used in scripts. That means you can have um, small, small scripts. Uh, they are completely independent, but you can uh, also em embed script in different scripts. So this is also, also possible. So it is a very, very powerful um, um, feature here. Uh, to stay on this, the next what I want to show you are commands. Um, for instance, HTTP commands. You see here the link under commands, and you have different type types. You have a so-called TCP call, and you have HTTP commands. Um, that means um, TCP commands uh, means if you have maybe a smart TV, um, a Samsung Panasonic like this, it is inside your network, then you can give here an IP address, and it is always communicating more or less over the port 23. So you need to read the manual instruction. You can say, okay, uh, if, uh, if I want to send a TCP command, for instance, um, make a um, start or switch the TV on, you need to uh, add here under the commands um, your smart TV and the command is a um, so-called hexadecimal command. So in this case, I have no example, but I have here an example for an HTTP command. That means my camera allows um, different, different to to um, different uh, to have different uh, HTTP commands. It can be to play a sound, or it can be uh, what is more practical um, to make a snapshot. What I did here, I have uh, I created an HTTP command. I called it Mobotics Alarm Sound. It can also be Mobotics uh, Alarm Snapshot. And here I type in the complete command. Uh, the command here, it depends on what kind of IP device do you have. So um, in this case, I have my Mobotics and I know this, like this one. And I have now created one HTTP, HTTP command. Now, what I can do is also to, to uh, create a trigger uh, that this command uh, gets started. That means what I can do is to go under, for instance, under my group addresses and say, okay, uh, I have a detector in my corridor. Um, and I want, if I'm not at home, for instance, if this core, if this detector detects someone, uh, it shall not just switch on the light. I also want to trigger my robotics camera to make a snapshot to see who is standing in front of the door, for instance. So I say plus, save. And now under triggers, what I can do is to say I want to add a new trigger. And maybe I can say snapshot. Say OK. Whenever the group address and my detector in the corridor is triggered, then I want to add a network command and to give a sound or make a snapshot and say save. It means this is also a very, very powerful uh, um, feature, how you can combine different functions uh, to, to one, one good, so, good solution. The next and the last point is um, how to integrate a Philips Hue inside. Uh, maybe you know it from the Comfort Touch and our uh, free at home system that we have an integrated integrated um, gateway inside. More or less, it, it's the same like here. It means what you can do 
is uh, at your local device, the same procedure like you are searching for UPnPs. Um, you search, you press the button of, of the U-Bridge, then you click to apply to search. So the address will automatically appear here. Then you can upload or synchronize the configuration with your portal. And then you have the U-Bridge inside your portal. That means what you only need to do is to say, okay, uh, sorry, um, I go to group addresses. And in that case, because um, the Philips Hue is um, an independent, it is, it is independent from group addresses uh, by nature. So you need uh, to create your own group addresses for, for this. What you can do is you can manually add, I did it here, a new structure called Philips Hue, and I added it here, RGBs, and given a name to say, okay, I have three lamps, lamp one, two, three, and I create manually more or less a virtual group address like Q, 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 one, two, three for the lamps and RGB for the colors and CT if uh, it is possible or if your LED is supported uh, the color temperature, you can also use CT for color temperature to choose between warm white and white wise, uh, warm white and cold white. If you did this, you can also go under your profiles, make a new page, call it RGB, say save, and then to add an RGB control like this, and you see here it's the same same procedure. It is displayed here what I have defined in my group addresses, and say save, and so you can also step by step add um, the functions here. Um, there are also some nice possibilities locally on you on, on the device. That means if I jump here back to the local device, you have also, or your customer has also the possibility not only to test the alarm messages, what he can also do is to create over the web page, of course, also over his app, to create his own scenes. That means what he can do is to say, okay, I want to add a new scene. Um, training webinar. And you see here, these are the, the, all the group addresses you have enabled by importing or reorganizing, uh, reorganizing the structure in the, in the step, in the first, first step. Now he can say, okay, uh, the um, halogen spot. I want to be on the RGB LED. I want to bring it on red, something like that, and say, okay, applying changes. He can also select some several commands like this or HTTPs. Um, he, he can really make his scenes by, by his own very, very easy. And what is also possible is uh, he can also manage his own time profiles and time switches to say okay uh, give it a name when i want to to have this uh, you can um, say okay every day every month every week at that time and so on and maybe uh, say okay play a scenes do an action and you see this list is the same list like uh, uh, the list you have you did in the first step by um, defining the group addresses. What do you want that your customer is able to, to use? Yeah, more or less, I finished my presentation. Igor, first of all, thank you for your great presentation. I think um, you could see how powerful this device is. It's not only a KNX device, but it allows you to integrate many more functions or solutions in your building. Yeah, together with the KNX installation and together with these yeah, push control touch KNX. Yeah. Really great. Thank you. Just information about our further 
Presence uh, Seminars here in Heidelberg. Um, you might remember Certified Advanced Training will be in July. Still some space, places free. You can register if you want. We have our KNX Tutor course in October and also some more security panel uh, trainings here in Heidelberg. We added one more Certified Basic Training now in this year. Additionally, in end of November, so we got some requests from our uh, colleagues and, and customers to have an additional certified basic training. So keep this in mind, 21st until the 25th of November, but we will send an additional invitation uh, to all of you uh, um, soon. Yeah, our next webinar will deal with yeah, new components as well, our new analog actuators. We have shown already on the Light and Building Fair, but they will be launched officially in, in July, so next month. And this gives us a chance to inform you in some more details about these analog actuators, but also about analog value processing at all. So we also talk a bit about our analog inputs, um, but mainly on we talk about analog actuators. Yeah. So I see uh, some more questions <laughs> coming in the chat. So and already answer. But again, we will summarize everything in our feedback email you will get very soon. Okay, then I would say thank you to all of you and uh, see you at the next webinar. Thank you and goodbye. Ciao, ciao.